We used to be one of the most smoking countries in the world, uh, but right now I think we, on the average, uh, which we uh, compare with the rest of Europe, uh, if you look 25 years back, we had a really uh, big decrease, but then two or three years ago, it seemed like that the, there's been a, um, uh, how to say, um, the, um, the trend have stopped. So we have, we have reached some kind of a level. Uh, for the last couple of years, there have been around 17% of the uh, Danish population who smoke every day, and then there is about 5% who smoke less than every day, once in a while. In 2012, Copenhagen City Council announced their objective of making the city a smoke-free area by 2025, reducing the number of smokers to less than 4%. It's a vision we have uh, saying that we should be smoke free in 2025. Uh, I think we're the first city in the world actually that set an end date to smoking. So it's a vision and it's a political statement that we will end smoking, we'll stop smoking and we hope to achieve that. The adult and the elderly people, they will not, um, I mean, they will not stop. But if you kind of teach young children to avoid smoking, I think that's a brilliant idea. If they want to smoke, they can smoke, but just they should control like smoking in the public places because there are kids all around and they should not in, smoke in front of the kids. <laughs> yeah. I think it's a very good idea to uh, get people to stop smoking because it's really expensive and bad for you. I think it's a really good idea to start educating people more about it and so we make sure that people don't start smoking. Um, but for those who smoke already, I think it's really tough and put a lot of pressure on where you can smoke and where you can't. So that's maybe too much. That's why it's quite difficult to find a, a right solution for this issue. In the last year, the European Union has ruled for stronger laws against tobacco consumption. In May 2016, the European Parliament has voted a ban on menthol cigarettes and the use of plain standardized packaging before 2020. All these reforms are aimed at reducing tobacco product consumption, especially among younger people. In most of the um, tobacco control measures in Denmark um, come, come from European Union or from WHO or other international organizations. Uh, so it's a very important um, agreement in Europe and then it would influence Denmark a lot. The measures adopted by the European Union are quite direct. But for Nina Thompson, smoother policies can also give satisfying results. I know that banning cigarettes and doing the things that they did in the European Parliament, that works. Every um, university professor working on health will tell me that. For me, well, democracy is not being fully aligned with the population or the citizens. But I, shouldn't, I don't think I should do something that the citizens are against, not uh, really, really against. Um, so I think it's small steps. Uh, we know that seven out of 10 smokers actually want to quit smoking, but they're not ready. They do not know how. They do not have the resources to stop smoking. So instead of putting our finger in the air and say, oh, you're a bad person, you're not a good citizen, we should give them a helping hand. The policy of Copenhagen City Council has two targets, the smokers, but most importantly, the potential future consumers. Uh, and so we're working in different ways uh, with these two groups, uh, target groups. Uh, the first one, people that already smoke, that smoking cessation causes, doing it, uh, making it more difficult to smoke, for example, in the workplace, in the playgrounds and stuff like that. So th that's one way to work with it. And for the next generation, it's uh, prevention. It's uh, doing work in the, in the, in the schools, um, in the high schools in Copenhagen, in order for them not to start smoking. Even though there are people that sit with yellow nails saying, you shouldn't intervene, <laughs> everyone could understand that my child shouldn't smoke. So there's a good vibe about the next generation um, process. One of the things we've done is that we've, uh, we know there's a lot of social inequality in health. And uh, the people that still are heavy smokers 
are typically people unemployed, uh, low education. So actually, we've done a, a phoning campaign where we phoned in the um, kind of the ghetto areas. We phoned everyone and said, "Well, you know, you live here. Are you a smoker? Would you like to have a smoking cessation course?" If you look at the work that's done in Copenhagen, it will take 10 or 15 years before we we see the results in in cancer number of cancers. And already that the cigarette packs have changed. Um, The shape of them have changed. The the, uh, the um, warnings, the picture warnings, have become much larger. I think more or less twice the size they had before. So I think the tobacco product directive is a very important uh, thing also in Denmark. In Copenhagen, they have an, they have a fine goal, but the, um, the tools that chosen until now is not is not powerful enough.